Good afternoon, everyone. Uh, thank you all for joining the webinar today. My name is Philip Reeves, and I'm here with Melissa Bradley. And so really excited to take you all through uh, the pipeline program. So we're going to go ahead and get started. Give me one second. So I want to go over the agenda uh, today. We're going to talk a little bit about 1863, what our vision is as an organization, our goals, talk a little bit about our leadership team for this program uh, and, and a higher level as well. We're going to talk more about the program to give you a sense of what the expectations are uh, throughout the life cycle of the program. But really, today's webinar is for the benefit of you all. And so we're going to have a lot of time for questions and answers. Our goal today is that you all don't leave without all of your questions answered uh, to the best of our ability. And so as we've talked about, the chat box where there's sort of an active conversation going now, that's the chat box that we'll be monitoring for questions. Uh, please stick to that chat box uh, as you ask your questions. And, and don't hesitate to ask as we're, we're kind of moving through uh, today's webinar. So who we are, uh, 1863, we are, uh, we've been around for about three years now. We've worked with over 170 companies. We have, um, our goal is to bridge the gap between entrepreneurs and equity. And really we're focused on accelerating new majority entrepreneurs, which we define as minority and women led companies. Uh, overall, our goal is to create $100 billion of new wealth for and by the new majority. And this is Melissa. I just want to welcome you all to the webinars and more. And we're excited to have created this particular program. And I'm sharing the other programs because part of this is if this for some reason doesn't work out as we go through the details, the timing doesn't work, uh, it doesn't seem like a good fit. We want to be able to still work with you um, as we continue to have other programs that are designed to support new majority entrepreneurs. At present, we are currently coaching, mentoring, and running over 5,000 entrepreneurs through a variety of programs. Uh, we've run programs in DC and beyond. And so for DC, we're pr proud there were almost at 200 folks who graduated just in the last year. And then we've also had the privilege to run programs in other places. Um, I share that background again, because I want to make sure that this is an opportunity for you to also think about other people, uh, that the work we're doing could benefit. Um, as you can see, my name is Melissa Bradley, and I am the managing partner here at 1863. Uh, I am proud to say that I have been where you are. Uh, I have been an entrepreneur. I started a financial services company many years ago and sold it. I have been a venture capitalist twice, and I'm currently an angel investor. And I'm extremely excited about this because we have had significant success in helping our entrepreneurs to date, increase their revenue, increase their employee count, as well as go on and leverage additional capital to grow their business. So it is my pleasure to meet all of you. And my name is Philip Reeves. My background is in finance. I began my career in private equity at Lehman Brothers. Uh, I've since become an entrepreneur myself. I've worked with small businesses for the last decade or so here in the DC area and really excited to bring a breath of knowledge to, uh, to this program. And in addition to Melissa and myself, we'll have a large segment of instructors uh, and guest speakers, including uh, the 1863 Business Impact Team, which is our internal resource of accountants and legal support. We found we find that a lot of companies uh, need that counsel, and so we always make that available to a benefit uh, for our program participants. We also will be joined, uh, if anybody is familiar with Honeypot out of Atlanta, B will be a, a special individual who will join us. Uh, and that's part of our goal to make sure that this is a multi-sensory experience uh, where you have the chance to both listen to information, apply information, learn from each other, and learn from experts. Uh, the program is designed to be four months in length. And before you say, oh my God, that's a long time, we won't necessarily see you face to face for that entire time. We've built in a week residency here in DC with a set of pre-work that'll be done online and a significant amount of post-work that'll be done offline in a collective manner. And then upon graduation, you will each receive a coach and access to a mentor that will help continue the work that we started here in DC. So during the residency, which is uh, the week long program here in DC, 
we'll have a lot of MBA style coursework from all of our practitioners. And again, everyone is from industry. They've been where you all are. They are or were uh, entrepreneurs. We'll also have office hours. We find that it's really important for us to spend one-on-one -on -one time with you. And so everyone that's in the pipeline program will get access to our team one-on-one -on -one to, to get specific information that'll benefit and impact your business. And then as Melissa alluded to, we'll have a, uh, a fireside chat almost every night to have intimate conversations with people in the space, whether they be from industry or they be fellow entrepreneurs. And we also have a few dinners so that we can you know, spend more time together as a group, build that social capital and start to uh, continue to find ways to grow businesses. So the subject matter um, is broad in nature in that we're focusing on what we believe to be four of the key tenants to growing a scalable business. That is finances and financing, marketing and branding, sales and business development, and talent management. And the goal for us is to make sure that this is not just a hodgepodge of theoretical content, but there's an opportunity to apply a set of tools and rubrics to then be able to extend with the sole purpose of being able to scale your business. We hope that during the Q&A, there are other topics or you have questions about the curriculum, then please do let us know. Uh, upon the review of the applications and once you've been selected, we will send you what the agenda is for the week uh, so that you have it in advance and, and have a sense of, of where uh, you may be most excited. I should note that you, the residency is required, so you do need to be in town um, every single day to be able to uh, really receive the opportunity with the Business Impact Team, as well as with your coaches and mentors. We recognize that DC has become a very popular place, uh, and it's not the easiest place to find housing, and not to mention lodging. So we have uh, secured rooms for all of our participants at Hyatt Place, uh, which is here in DC. And so if you may recall from the website, we had initially decided to offer financial support to offset travel and lodging. We realized that that was not enough. Uh, and so we have decided to cover all of your uh, housing uh, while you're here and all of the meals as it relates to the program. So we'll provide breakfast, uh, lunch and dinner. Um, and then we would ask that you then, uh, as opposed to getting a thousand dollar stipend, which for some may not uh, be helpful or really put a dent, um, then we will cover all of that and ask that you are now solely responsible for the travel uh, back and forth. So after the residency program concludes, uh, as Melissa mentioned, we will stay in contact with you. And what that looks like is more one-on-one -on -one coaching uh, and periodic check-ins with your mentors. And, and the goal of this really is during the residency program, we'll work on outlining specific goals for your business. And so after we conclude the residency, we'll be working with you to hit those metrics and meet those milestones. Uh, we may augment that with additional guest speakers, other fireside chats that we'll make available to uh, our cohort participants, but use this as an opportunity to build on what you can learn in a residency and apply it uh, to your business on a day to day. And I should say that this is something that we will be monitoring. So we have a tech platform uh, that you will be registered to upon your acceptance and, and, and agreement to attend where you will start uploading this information and that's how we will actually track you. And I should say that that particular tracking system will be critical uh, because as you may have mentioned in some, notice, I'm sorry, in some of the material, uh, we are prepared to make investments in some of the companies that come through. So that investment process and consideration will not happen until the entire program is complete at the end of four months. But part of our decision making process won't just be who needs the money the most, um, but it'll be based on where do we see the greatest amount of progress and traction and where do we think the dollars that we plan to invest can be catalytic. So this is, uh, the key dates are from our website. This information is available online, but I want to briefly go through it with everyone. Uh, again, applications close in two days. Uh, so if you know folks that you think would be great candidates for the program, please uh, have them apply. During February, we're going to be doing internal reviews of the applications and making selections. And our, we will have everyone uh, notified by March 1st. And we're hoping to beat that deadline, but that is our, our, our stated deadline. And we will notify both ways. We will notify uh, acceptance and non-acceptance and find ways to work with folks, even if uh, they're not acceptance of the program. 
through March will be some of the onboarding online training that Melissa spoke about, uh, some of the, the digital work that we have pre-residency. April 21st through 27th, this is the residency portion of the program uh, where you're required to be here in DC. Um, this is sort of where the, the, the bulk of the MBA style coursework and all of our prior to tasks will take place. Through June, uh, we'll have that post-accelerated coaching. So that looks like periodic check-ins, um, whether that be monthly or bi-monthly with your mentors and with our coaches. And then uh, through July, we'll have an assessment and then exit interviews with all the residents, uh, with all the program participants, I'm sorry. And so uh, with that, Oh, I'm sorry. And I would just say one more thing, which you showed, which you might have seen, and again, some of the communications. For this particular program, um, what I didn't mention is in addition to my work at 1863, I'm also a professor at Georgetown University McDonough School of Business. So all of the graduates of this program will receive a small business certificate uh, from Georgetown University McDonough School of Business. And so what will happen is that on April 21st, and we respect that that's Easter, uh, we will ask people to arrive in the evening uh, on that Sunday and we'll have dinner and just really get to know each other. And then all of the work will begin and take place Monday through Friday and then a portion of Saturday. And then we will actually have a graduation ceremony for you um, that will be available where you will receive your certificate and we will have a set of stakeholders. And if you have folks that you want to invite them to be closed or want to fly in, uh, we will be putting together all the details for that and that will be um, Saturday. Great. And so we now like to take this time again, as we mentioned, the benefit of this call is for you all. And so please, um, I'm sure there are questions out there. If you have a question, please place it in the chat box. Um, I'll let Melissa read the question, uh, questions as they come in and uh, she and I can field them. And again, please keep them coming. Um, so I want to thank those who've been replying and actively uh, on the chat box. So um, the couple of questions so far uh, include, um, is it too late to make changes uh, to the application? So it is. However, uh, some have already been proactively sending updates. And so if you have any additions that you want to make to the application, uh, then you should feel free just to email myself and Phil. I'm Melissa at and Phil is Phil at 1863ventures.net. Um, and then uh, you, the application is uh, online. So if you go to 1863ventures.net in the upper right-hand corner, you'll see uh, the pipeline program. If you click on that, then you can get to the application. Um, does your business have to be up and running? The business does have to be up and running, which is why I shared some of the other programs that we run. The Emerge program is really designed uh, for more earlier stage companies. In this case, we are looking for companies that have traction, that is customer traction, uh, that have some revenue, um, and that also have, if it's a technology, then if there's a technology that is at least, let's say 65 to 70% built, but certainly beyond MVP. And that is because the, the, the quality of speakers and their experiences and certainly the content that we have developed is really focused on scale. And so we will not be covering things like the business model canvas. We can certainly do a quick review. We will ask you to submit one in advance, but there's an assumption here that you have a personally become comfortable with the business and, and what your role is in it and, and really want to figure out how you take it to the next level. That B, you have moved beyond validation that there's actually customer traction and people are willing to pay. They may not be paying full price, uh, but they certainly are paying to for your business. Uh, and this is really focused on how do we actually help you grow. So for example, uh, one of the speakers that we're finalizing is a representative from Target. So one of the strategies that you probably saw was looking at CPG companies and how scale can be achieved through supplier diversity. We are looking at tech companies, tech enable companies, how can they scale through tech transfer? So this is really uh, focused on being able to help scale the business. We have provided a range in terms of the amount of revenue that, that we're looking for. And I think we're willing to be flexible. We always are. Um, we had by the request of some of our sponsors decided somewhere between 250 to a million, but we realized as we looked at some of the applications, there's some really great people where 
We respect the fact that you're probably not at full price, that you've still been testing, that you've gone from alpha to beta. We want to acknowledge that. So I, I think the, the larger question is, what are some of the things that we're looking for in an application? I'll share some, and then I'll pass it to Phil. I think we're looking for all of those things we talked about in terms of traction and, and some validation of the company. Um, we're also looking at the founder. Who are you? What's your commitment to this? Um, we are very receptive and supportive, recognizing there are people who are running businesses and have side hustles that which are their jobs who have to pay for that we really are looking for folks who are dedicated and working on their company a hundred percent um so that's the focus and then we are um we are sector broad um so we have a track that will take place for b2c companies and we have a track that'll take place for b2b companies so there'll be several days that you're together and there'll be some days that that you're apart but i'll let phil add anything i might have missed in terms of uh, what we're looking for Absolutely. I think Melissa said it well. We're also looking for companies that have clear value proposition, that have differentiators, uh, that bring something unique to the marketplace. And so if you have that, that sort of scalable entity, that, that sort of uh, the criteria we're looking to check. Um, I'm looking at some of the other questions and I, I'm noticing that we got, we lost this for a second. So if you didn't hear something, um, please, uh, ask me again via the chat box. They're coming in fast, so I'm, I'm trying to keep up and, and we're potentially uh, able to consolidate them. There was a question that if participants successfully complete the program, is it possible to get introductions to potential partners or pilots? Absolutely. So we are looking to, uh, our goal of the program, again, as I mentioned, to bring in those guest speakers. Uh, Melissa gave a great example of Target. There's other folks that we're looking to identify um, supplier diversity conferences that we're aware of that we're looking to, to tee companies up for. And so, yes, um, our goal is that once you leave the program, we're able to start making introductions. Uh, 1863 has a very broad network, um, and we love to bring the benefit of that to our entrepreneurs. Um. Sorry, I was just setting a chat. Um, the uh, other question is, what is the size of the investment? It will vary. So we are not your traditional accelerator where there's a certain amount of money per company. Uh, we have a pool of dollars that have been allocated. And so if we're lucky, everybody could participate uh, if we think that they're worth it. So we're not stuck in a box. Um, we have to parse it out. If we find that every participant we believe could be uh, supported through a financial investment and they've met the criteria and the gating factors and they've completed the program, then that would be wonderful. Um, and then if you could, um, if then if you're, if we don't and you don't meet the criteria, then we obviously would not invest in you. Um, how many would be selected? We're looking at up to 30. Um, the idea is that we will do this program twice this year. Uh, so we will run this cohort and then hopefully field another group. It may not start till 2020, but we field a second cohort uh, at the end of the year, if not start that process. So there will be uh, another opportunity. Um, there's a question about Emerge, and I would just encourage you to go to our website, 1863ventures.net. And as you scroll down the page, you will see all of our programs, Emerge, Accelerate, and Pipeline. So feel free to click on Emerge. And then if you do have any other questions about Emerge, then please feel free to email me at melissa at 1863ventures.net. Um, there is a, uh, there is a mem uh, registration uh, that you fill out, which is a contact us. And then you would just note that you're looking for a program in your early stage startup. And that's how we put you in the queue. Uh, for the Emerge program. So, so thank you for asking that. Um, we have, I think this is, the name is Ingrid Cook. Uh, and so we have a few questions there. So I wanna try to get through those. Um, so we, we, we've worked with some companies, what percentage of the companies have you invested in? And that would be none. Um, this is the first time that we are making investments. Um, we have done so in a variety of other ways through pitch competitions, uh, through professional service support where we carve out a set of services like legal accounting, development, uh, marketing and branding. We've paid for those. So we typically have done indirect investments. And this is the first time that we're actually uh, building an investment. So we hope to, to learn a lot from this process. The post accelerator program is, as Phil mentioned, will continue after you graduate through the summer. And that will be a combination of one-on-one check-ins 
cohort check-ins and then check-ins with your mentors. Um, depending on the geographic mix of where folks are, we're agnostic to that. Uh, it could be something that we actually come visit if we find some event that seems like people will be at or it just makes sense because of proximity. Uh, but it is designed to be weekly, so I would, I'm sorry, monthly, so I would say that at least three to four times a month we will be uh, in touch with you. Um, the sectors that we invest in, again, are agnostic. We have construction, we have professional services, we have food and beverage, we have tech, we have tech enabled, we have CPG, we have media. So we are one of the few folks um, that have been sector agnostic. Um, and then there is uh, not so much a demo day. Um, that's not something that we strive for. We have found since I've been doing this for 20 plus years that demo days tend to be the summary of a sprint, but not the foundation for long-term sustainable success. So as I mentioned, we will have a graduation uh, and that'll be an opportunity for you to talk about your businesses, certainly meet with other investors, stakeholders that we know. Again, you can invite your own. Uh, and then I should say we use the word investment because we do see it as an opportunity uh, to put money into the company, but the money that we will be given will be provided as a grant. Um, so we will not be taking equity. Um, we will be making as a grant with the pure intention, and again, we have been very intentional about this, is that we want to make sure that we are preserving our businesses, our new majority companies, which we know oftentimes are not in the hands of the, the majority of the shares are in their hands by the time they go through multiple events. So this is a strategy that we have done before, typically through pitch competitions with the idea that the grant well, we will be tracking you and there will be metrics and requirements and we will be treat you'll be treated like a portfolio company the idea is how do we help preserve your leadership or those of your employees on the cap table and then we obviously have relationships with other folks that we can continue um, to be able to make recommendations and have the continuation of either debt financing, bridge financing, or, or venture capital um, financing. Um, at this point in time, there are no slots designated for anyone in particular. Uh, in the eMERGE program, we do actually have very specific slots for those that are, for those in DC, we'd say east of the river. For those outside of DC, we would say historically marginalized communities, and we can tell that by your zip code, which are oftentimes the opportunity zones. Um, but this is a, a national accelerator, and so we will make sure that we are supporting historically marginalized communities, what we call new majority entrepreneurs, with the idea of making sure that we're making a contribution to your company, both in terms of intellectual capital, social capital, uh, and financial capital. Someone has asked, sorry, I'm just going through, how is the interview set up? So it will be done through Zoom. Uh, so at minimum, it will be one of us and at least one of the person. So I wouldn't say it's a panel, but I would say it's at least two people. Um, and so we will go through a series of cycles um, that we want to be able to winnow down. So as Phil mentioned, the March 1st deadline is kind of the outlier. Uh, we, once the application process closed, we'll start parsing through. Uh, we want to be respectful of time, so we don't want to wait too long because people need to make travel arrangements to get here, obviously. Um, so I hope that we can we can meet that maybe five to seven days in advance, but we want to be diligent, diligent, diligent in our process um, and respectful of your time. I think we are very clear as entrepreneurs ourselves that the one thing most entrepreneurs don't have is a lot of time and a lot of money. Uh, I believe I've answered all the questions, but if I haven't, please keep hitting me on the chat line. Um, and then I'm gonna pause and see if Phil wants to add anything to any of the questions that I've tried to go through. No, I think, I think that covers uh, pretty well. Uh, I hope what we've demonstrated is that pipeline is something we think is gonna be impacting a lot of entrepreneurs in a way that's meaningful. Um, unlike other accelerator programs, you know, we're not trying to build a pipeline so that we can put stakes in the companies. Um, we want to find a way to, to share in the risk and share with you all uh, in a way that's meaningful. We do have one other question. I'm sorry, I'm there, they're scrolling quickly, which is we have a company with two founders. Would you recommend that both attend or just one? I think I do. Really, it'd be great to have one attend. Um, we, we, what we don't want to have, we, we want to make sure that 
the people that do attend get a chance to interact with everyone else in the cohort. We found that there's a lot of group learning that takes place and sort of having shared experiences. And so we always encourage one person to attend so that people don't end up siloed in their pairs, uh, kind of digging through their company and don't spend as much time with their peers. And Megan, you had asked a question, if we are trying to support the employment, those underappreciated communities that count in your assessment, I pinged you back to say, can you say more? Because I'm not exactly sure um, what you're asking and I want to make sure we, we respond uh, appropriately. So while I'm waiting for that, um, what I'm seeing, which, I'm, which I, we're happy about, is lots of positive feedback. Um, we have spent a lot of time uh, thinking about this. Uh, Erica, I'm gonna take that as a compliment that you're saying this is a very unique program. Uh, we have spent a lot of time and actually have had many of our graduates go to all the other programs. Uh, we are familiar, we're part of a much larger ecosystem, so we know what's happening um, in the, across the universe. And what we've tried to do is take the best of what we've seen work in the programs that we have run so far, We've tried to learn from the feedback that we get from our entrepreneurs who are more than happy to tell us what we're doing right and what we're doing wrong and, and adjust for that and course correct. We've tried to take the best of what we see out there, but most importantly, what's been missing out there, particularly for uh, entrepreneurs of color and historically marginalized entrepreneurs. So we, we hope we get that right. Um, Megan, I see that you, we are a DC based company that is focused on helping bring a real business development opportunity for members. Yeah, with that, it, you know, again, we are looking for businesses. We are not taking nonprofits and I'm not saying that's what you are doing, but as long as it's a business and, and we see traction and it's a, it's a business that we think we can help grow and scale, then we're happy to take it. I want to say that having been a venture capitalist and, and Phil can speak to this as well and, and having run these programs we are very clear that if you do not get in, it is not because we don't think you're a good business, it's that we probably don't think we can help you in the ways that you need help. Uh, and so I do wanna say that for anyone that doesn't get in, we will offer some coaching and happy to identify, honestly, possibly better or more aligned opportunities that may work for you or your business. So uh, I wanna be clear that none of you, at least from our perspective, should take this personally. If you don't get in, but we really want to make sure that our expectation is that following the residency within six to nine months thereafter, uh, that businesses are really taking off and seeing some significant growth and, and traction. Uh, and we said we're going to take up to 30 uh, participants in the program. So one thing I, I do want to put to the group is, as I said, we're always interested in learning more from uh, each of you. And so if there's something, is there some topic or burning question or resource that you think you'd like us to that you want to make sure is in pipeline um we'd love to get that feedback to make sure that we can iterate on our side and, and bring that uh, to the forefront so someone has said human resources and i'm happy to say that um, as I might have mentioned earlier, but this is where I appreciate you raising it Talentia, because language is everything uh, we call it talent management uh, because we recognize that as a CEO and founder, your job is not just to manage the people who work for you, but also to manage your board of directors or advisors, as well as to manage partners. So we will be covering human resources and looking from a slightly more holistic perspective around talent management partners and, and board of directors. Uh, someone said technology. Can you say a little bit more, Shay, when you say technology is that, I, my mind goes to coding, uh, or to platform. technology platform. So if you could just ping us back, that'd be helpful. Uh, marketing channel and establishing partnerships. Uh, that's one where we're spending a lot of time. Uh, we are reaching out to folks that have different channels, whether that be retail, direct to consumer, online, via platforms like Amazon. So all of that is something that we're wrapping into pipeline uh, on the B2B side, if that's business to government, uh, business to the private sector, uh, going to individual customers, we're, we're spending a lot of time actually thinking about that specifically. And I think just to the Amazon point, well, you know, because of some of the partnerships that people have asked if some of our partners are, you know, if we find um, that the entrepreneurs coming out need access to resources, then we have them. So if people need Amazon credits, we can get those. If people need Google credits, we can get those. They're all supporters of ours. 
um, that are happy to lend to that. Again, we are not a traditional tell you, well, you're going to get X amount of dollars in credits because that may or may not be helpful to you. So we're really, I think the, the best way is that we're really trying to leverage a cohort model um, to provide intensive training and the start of application to help build your social capital by meeting amazing people like yourselves and helping to expand your ecosystem. And then also provide resources that we think can be helpful uh, that are both financial and non-financial in terms of growing your business. So we wanna be able to have this curated experience for yourself throughout where there was a one-to-one -one opportunity, a one-to-few and a one-to-many. Uh, and then someone talked about funding as a significant barrier uh, and that is an area we're going to talk about. Um, having been a venture capitalist as well as recently raised venture capital, the landscape is, is changed dramatically. And so I want to be clear that uh, we are not in the business of helping people pitch better uh, because I see way too many people who are pitching and they're so not ready for venture capital. Uh, you will find that we, our job is to be extremely honest with you uh, with the intention of helping your business grow, not, not be transparent on where we think there's opportunity for improvement so from our perspective, we have an entire section built on financing strategies where we recognize that that may be some self-funding, that may be friends and family, that may be debt financing, that may be convertible, that may be venture capital. But the, the end result will be that you actually have a financing strategy, uh, how to move forward based on the cadence and end stage of your business. Absolutely. I mean, I think the stat is only 4% of companies are receive venture funding and that's because only four it's only right for four percent of companies and so we want to make sure we address those four but the broader uh 96 percent that are out there and so whether that's getting financing from customers winning contracts uh friends and family so make sure you have a line of credit so that your receivables are correct all those things are something that we're, we're very sensitive to and, and very cognizant of and we just got a question and I'm laughing because this is Phil's expertise. Will you cover financial modeling and projections? I live <laughs> for financial modeling and projections. Uh, and so, yes, we will. Um, it's something we've, we've done in all of our cohorts. We want to make sure that everyone understands uh, how their business works and has a model that they're not only they're comfortable with that they can use to run their business business, project their business, uh, and show people and themselves comfort that, that these are all milestones that are achievable. And I think it's going to be important, uh, and I'm seeing some others coming in, is that we're mindful that why it's four months is because there are some things that we think are well received and well presented in a group format and others that aren't. So I want to be clear that you will not leave on Saturday and go, I got my financial model down. But you will begin to understand the framework. It will be our, our job in those three to four touch points throughout the month to make sure that by the end, that indeed you do have a financial model, but more importantly, you know how to do it for yourself. Um, so I think I just want to level set expectations that, you know, we don't want this to be an right. intensive experience where your mind explodes and then you go home paralyzed because you're like, what did they say on day two? Um, so there is, again, a cadence that what we're trying to have. Um, I appreciate folks bringing up around founder stress and, and how to balance, and we do expect that our fireside chat speakers will be extremely honest, so be prepared. Uh, we have done this type of fireside chat, having entrepreneurs speak with folks that may be, you know, five, six, seven steps ahead of them. Um, so we definitely have that opportunity to talk about how do you manage that. We have folks of how do you manage family. Uh, we, we know that, you know, while African-American women are starting businesses six times, their white peers, oftentimes part of that struggle and, and, and slower pace of growth is because we have family. And I use air quotes because that could be folks that are ours or folks that we're taking care of. Uh, and we have seen through our own programs locally and regionally that that is a challenge, that people are hard pressed to sometimes start businesses or quit that full-time job, even though they have revenue, because that full-time job is still subsidizing your family. So, so we're going to be real uh, in here, and I should say to that note that we do expect that everything we talk about is confidential. So the biggest thing for us is, is not just creating a space where you're going to learn, but creating a safe space. And you will be reminded of that. You'll be asked to, I don't want to say contract, but I would say an, an agreement uh, that talks about conduct, that talks about participation. Um, so that's extremely important. Um, someone just said the cohort is limited to 2030. If participated recipient of other pitch competitions, are you limiting 
to those who are previous. No, we are, we are looking at this as a blank slate. I think to the extent that any company has shown traction of some sort, whether that's a strategic partnership with a, with a local business or a big business, to the extent that that's traction via revenue, with the, to the extent that's traction because they've been recognized by a trusted partner that we have, then, then we're more than happy to take that into consideration. Uh, but no one is automatically in, nor is anyone automatically excluded uh, because you had the chance to, to be successful. Any other questions? Well, Meg, good luck to moving your car by four o'clock. Don't get a ticket, my friend. We, we understand, we understand. Um, we have time left, so, so I don't want to cut us short. Um, what I will say is that we are recording this, um, so we will make this available. Uh, we will continue to push out information uh, about the program. Uh, and again, both Bill and I are here via email to answer any questions um, that you may have. Well, I want to, oh, sorry, I think my question was Skip. But will you also cover setting up referral programs and affiliate programs? That's an interesting question. Um, we've been spending a lot of time, as I mentioned, in the marketing space. Uh, and so we're still defining what that looks like. I think something like a referral program, affiliate program, we're cognizant of it. I, I think it'd be a great conversation for it in class. Um, I don't know if we'll go out and specifically uh, think th through that. Um, but like we're thinking about, you know, influencer strategies, content marketing, digital ad adwords, um, platforms I mentioned before. So th the full mix is is up for grabs and something that we're we're exploring. Look forward to talking about in the cohort. And that's also something that, based on our partners, we could even take up post residency. Uh, again, we want to we're trying to balance content that is relevant for as many people in the room as possible, but then still providing that post. A residency curation around what's very specific um, to you. Uh, Salentia asked how many contacts a month before graduation. So assuming that we have uh, the deadline and we plan to meet that of March 1st, that we will have a, a group call in March, uh, a group call in April before you arrive, uh, and then in between, so that's two calls, so two touch points, and then in between there our goal will be to talk to each of you individually. So I would say each of you will have uh, up to three uh, touch points before uh, before you before you come, and then obviously while you're here, uh, we'll see you every single day because we'll know where you're staying. Um, so it's introductions to actual companies and partners. So part of that it was the likelihood of making that happen. I think again we have curated a group of of experts, like a Target or others, where we think if that's the the market that you're in, then great. Um, and then again, depending on post-graduation uh, here in DC and then the continuance of the program, if there are particular uh, entities that you like, would want to have introductions to, then we are, we are happy to do that. Um, Raza, note pipeline participants do not have to live in the DC area. I was just giving an example around how we also take into account where our entrepreneurs are coming from. So let me reiterate, this is a national accelerator. We're doing a national call. We are welcoming entrepreneurs from all across the country uh, to be able to attend. And I want to apologize because uh, I said moms, uh, but it's also dad. So I want to give a shout out to the brothers like and founder dad like. Um, so yes, whatever your family composition is, we know it's stressful. And Phil and I are laughing uh, because we, our families are experiencing our stress right now uh, as we do this work, but they are extremely supportive of, of what we're doing. And I should probably give it to disclaimer that when you do meet Phil, he may not be as happy and excited as he is right now uh, because his wife is due to have their first baby on February 28th. So he'll be probably the happiest camper to be there because he'll get a break from, from child care. <laughs> but, but we look forward, uh, and the congrats are coming in. Uh, we look forward, uh, we, we both look forward and the entire team looks forward um, to, to seeing you. Uh, the interview process. Can you talk more about the interview process? And my sense is that it'll be a 30 to 45 minute uh, Zoom call, uh, like I said, with at least one of us and another member of our team. Uh, and our job or our goal will be to really just dig deeper into your application. 
Um, if you're selected for an interview, it means that we think you're a good fit, but at that point, it's really, are we a good fit for you? And so we'll probably focus on rehashing some of what we covered today, but really understanding what your goals and objectives are, and do we think we can meet them? And if we can't, the last thing we want to do is waste your time. Any other questions? So I think we'll end on that note. Um, my email is melissa at 1863ventures.net. Uh, Phil's... Uh, Phil's email uh, is um, phil at 1863ventures.net. And if there are any questions, uh, then feel free to email us or let us know. Great. Well, thank you all for taking the time to hop on the call today. We really appreciate it. Thank you for all of your questions. Uh, as Melissa mentioned, we're available, we're accessible. If you have anything to follow up with, uh, please don't hesitate to shoot us an email. Uh, but thanks everyone for applying and we look forward to speaking to you all soon. Thanks so much. Have a great one.